Thomas was alone. Thomas Was Alone is a puzzle platformer developed in late 2012 by Mike Bethel, who looks exactly like Harvey from Sabrina. You play as Thomas, a red rectangle, as well as his other rectangular friends, all on a quest to explore the world in which everything is a mystery. It's standard puzzle platformer affair in this game. You move the blocks from the start point to the end point, with the puzzles in between. The narrative is given to you via voiceover. It's cute, it's quirky, and it really sets the tone for the overall game. However, in terms of a fluid story, it generally leaves more questions than it answers. The game is, however, a very solid puzzle platformer. You control one character at any given time, and you must switch between characters in order to solve the puzzles. Each character has a unique trait necessary to solve any given stage. This generally works well enough, though it can be, at times, incredibly tedious. Especially when you have a lot of characters. Let me show you what I mean. So switch between characters, you can either use the Q and E keys. This can be annoying because you'll need to go through a couple of characters to get to the one you want. Or two, use the number keys. Now you might think that using the number keys would be ideal. But the problem is, is that in every stage, you are given a different set of blocks, thus you must use a different set of numbers. This generally leads to awkward camera pans, which can be rather annoying, especially when you can move the characters while the camera is still in motion. If it were me, this is how I would lay out the hub. Something like that would reduce the tedium immensely. Now this may seem a bit nitpicky, but it happens constantly doesn't ruin the overall experience, but it can get rather annoying. Okay, now that we've talked about the bad, let's move on to the good. Namely, the level design. Every level in this game serves a purpose, whether it be introducing a new element or allowing you to master an old one. It's in the second half that the game really shines. There are some really smart levels in this game. There isn't anything that will make you think, oh wow, I can't believe I figured that out, but you may think, Ah, huh, that's a cool way to use that. Take this level, for example. Here, you have Thomas, and what appears to be upside down Thomas. You need to get through this hole over here, but they can't jump there because it's too high. So then you start to tinker around a bit, and figure out that you can clear this gap here by using gravity. And you think, hey, what do I do now? The only other thing that you can do is jump. So you jump, and then you get through the hole. There are a few nifty puzzles like that throughout the game, and you'll be glad that you figured them out. The physics in this game work well enough. You jump like a block would jump. You know, if it wasn't physically impossible for blocks to jump. And it's smooth, and it's really nice to play. Another positive of this game is how it's presented. And this is where everything in the game sort of starts to come together. The narrative is presented the way it is, to create a sense of whimsy and mystery. The camera is zoomed in close so that you can connect with the characters. The pixelated style of the graphics is meant to complement the music, and the music is made to add to the whimsy. Many of these elements do sacrifice gameplay, as I said before. For example, the camera being zoomed in real close makes it harder to get a full perspective of the level in its entirety, and makes it easier to make a mistake. Though it's understandable the game go for a more presentation focus, as to separate itself from the trillions of flash puzzle platformers. Despite all that, this is still a really great game, and if you're hankering for a puzzle platformer, you should keep this in mind. However, I completed the game in about 4 hours, and at 10 bucks on Steam, I feel it's a bit much to ask. In terms of replay of value, you can collect special cube collectibles in a couple of the levels but I got most of them in my first playthrough, so don't expect much more longevity. All in all, if you can pick this up on sale, I'd recommend it to puzzle platformer fans, or even if you just got a couple of hours to kill. If there was more content, and the price was lower, this game would be much easier to recommend. However, in spite of all that, this game receives a high 7. Thanks for watching guys, comment below to tell me what you think, if you have any games you would like to see, leave a comment in the comment section below, or even PM me. I'll read it maybe.
if I feel like it. See ya!